Today's show is somewhat unusual. It's a mix of a classic consulting case and more technical questions from machine learning and data science. Please welcome the data science case interview by BCG Gamma. If you want to figure out what's going on in consulting cases and how to tackle them, read our new blog post linked in the description of this video. You'll see that once you know how to do the right thing, it's way easier than higher math for data science. If you find the video useful, please don't forget to like it and share it with your friends. That's the best way to contribute to our future episodes. My name is Viktor Ogulenko and you are watching Flash. Let's go! So today we are going to have an interview. It will take around one hour. I think first five to ten minutes we'll uh, spend like just to know each other. Probably I will introduce first, then you can introduce yourself. Then we are going to speak about like one of your favorite or like uh, project you're most proud of. And uh, after that it will take like about 25, 30 minutes for, uh, for a case. Mm -hmm. This will be like a mix of consultant case, mm -hmm. machine learning and uh, operational research case. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last 10, five minutes, uh, you'll be able to ask me any questions you want. Okay, sure. Is that okay for you? Yeah, it's okay. Cool, cool, thank you. So uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Gennady Fedin. I'm with BCG Gamma for almost three years. Uh, before BCG, I uh, mostly worked in academia. I did uh, like master and uh, then PhD in high school in, uh, of economics, mostly in operation research and uh, decision science. Uh, in BCG, I worked mostly on like airline uh, tourism projects, uh, mm -hmm. all, like with a couple of uh, European and American airlines, and uh, also did a couple of projects in retail, like mostly prom optimization on the retail side and also on the supplier side. Mm -hmm. Was like historical uh, analysis, like checking which promos how performed uh, in the past, uh, and uh, some forward looking, like uh, to create a tool, some like special decision support uh, programs for category managers to create uh, future promo calendars. Okay. Uh, yeah, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, nice to meet you, Gennady. My name is Daniel Polyakov. I am a machine learning engineer at Yandex Taxi, Yandex Eats, and Yandex Lavka. Uh, I have finished Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. Yandex School of Data Analysis, and uh, now I'm currently I work uh, uh, two years at Yandex uh, Taxi. My projects are cross-functional. Uh, uh, of, of, of these two years, I have done projects on recommendation systems, on uh, ranking systems, on uh, forecast uh, prediction systems for logistics, uh, for career logistics, for career planning, and uh, also it was. Uh, it, it was a mix of uh, of ML and uh, business and product, so it, it, it was not uh, like I am optimize this target because we because we should uh, take into account a lot of uh, big uh, business points. Yeah, yeah. great. And uh, how it happens that you uh, start working as a data scientist or like data engineer? I, I became to start working as a data scientist when I was a student, so. Uh, my bachelor degree is applied mathematics and physics, and uh, my minor was uh, uh, biostatistics and biophysics. And I decided to uh, to be like um, to have an expertise in both math, physics, biology, and data science because I uh, because I see that uh, nowadays if you can uh, acro cross uh, different areas of uh, of science, for example, bio for example, biology and data science you can achieve uh, ex extraordinary re results. So, and that's why I decided to uh, enter the Yandex School of Data Analysis because I wanted to uh, gain a lot of data analysis skills to apply them for business, for academy, and uh, for all, fu all my future projects. And what is the most attractive for you in data science? For, for this moment, uh, this is uh, its applications of data science for business. Uh, because I see uh, that we live at the era of uh, big data and uh, I see that uh, nowadays a lot of, a lot of companies have a, a, a big data, but they cannot fully uh, extract all the value from this data. So, and I see how data analysis can do it, and how machine learning algorithm, uh, algorithms can uh, can help to run the business more efficiently, uh, more easier, with less stress, 
So and I, I, I have seen that it works and uh, I want to uh, do, do, do this magic with, with machine learning in business because it has a lot of uh, business impact. And why do you want to go also to the consulting, not just like uh, as machine learning uh, data engineer as you are doing now? I think uh, that uh, at, at this point of my career, it's one, it one of the possible uh, ways. So, uh, because of the consulting, uh, you can combine the, a lot of product management, uh, uh, soft skills. You, you can do like a business owner. You have a lot of more, uh, you, 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 you take much more risk than to, uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, 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 comparing to, to the uh, software engineer. So it uh, might be attractive for me at this uh, point of time. And what do you expect to do as like, for example, gamma data scientist? How you imagine your future work? I, I have a team uh, with the broad expertise and we also have uh, uh, lots of industrial clients and they have a, a prob a problems and they ask uh, the company to, to help them. But they cannot uh, fully understand what uh, we can do for them. So we, uh, we should uh, mm, uh, contact the client, uh, find out about the problem, and uh, trying to formulate all the possible uh, ways how we can help, and then uh, implement uh, these decisions. Uh, I mean, implement, may, maybe it will be some simple um, service like an for example, for forecasting, or maybe we can uh, help him to get more insights from his data and then make iterations again and again to find uh, the ways uh, where we can help. Yeah, cool. And uh, let's move to one of your project. Can you tell me a little bit more about your like project you're proud most of, or like, of course, in, ter in, uh, in the bounds of NDA, what you can tell? I have several ones, but, I, but let me choose, uh, for example, a uh, case in uh, ranking and, uh, and recommender systems. As you know, uh, for, for example, in uh, Yandex Eats, uh, you should, uh, it's a model of marketplace and there are lots of, uh, for example, restaurants, lots of users, and we, and we should uh, choose which, which restaurants uh, are most suitable for user uh, at this point of time. We had a task that we should improve the uh, quality of the ranking algorithms. And uh, this means that we should choose the metrics, uh, carry out the research uh, and choose the model and train the model uh, and, uh, and, and estimate the effect. And so who have decided that this quality, whatever it is, uh, should, be, uh, should be improved? It was asked by the CTO of Yandex Seeds okay. because we because uh, when you use the product, it, it's called dog fooling. You see all the uh, all the weaknesses of the product. At, at this time, we understood that we had a lot of potential how to improve uh, okay. uh, how to improve this part of of the app because it was the main part. Because when the user entered the app, he or she uh, sees the ranking. And by ranking, you mean like uh, the you order. propose like the restaurant one, a restaurant two, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Based on the personal. Uh, uh, on the personal interest of the user, mm. of, of the current uh, context, I, I mean, morning or evening, okay. uh, weekend, uh, or, or or just usual uh, weekday. So, okay. and okay. we and, and we and we have gained several percent uh, more. Okay, after we uh, deployed our algorithm, after research and uh, model training, we have increased the GMV for several percent and it, it was a great uh, improvement. What have you measured? What have you increased? GMV, GMV, GMV. Would you please explain to a person who don't Yeah, know it's it. a total revenue of the company. Uh, GMV, it, it's like an, uh, one of the major business metrics mm -hmm. in, uh, in business. So uh, in these projects, we involved uh, three to five persons. It, it, it was quite cheap uh, for the company related to the effect because one, two or three percent or five in, uh, in at the scale of the company, it's really huge. Uh, how have you managed measure the effect? We carried out uh, an A-B experiment. We had an old formula of ranking, we had a new one, and we split it, our uh, audience into 50-50 mm. uh, groups. And, uh, and after that, I calculated uh, IK business metrics like conversions rate, uh, like uh, 
uh, total revenue, number of orders, uh, and and so on. Was uh, was there an improvement in all metrics, or some of them maybe like dropped a little bit? Yeah, it's an uh, it's a good question because uh, sometimes uh, uh, when we increased, uh, for example, uh, money in the business, we decrease uh, the user happiness. But in uh, that case, uh, almost all the metrics increased after after our ex experiments. That's why the CTO was uh, was happy. And. Uh, before the experiment, how have you decided which model to deploy? Like what? Yeah, uh, we have no, we estimated uh, the metrics, the, the key metrics offline. But in the recommender systems, it's difficult to uh, carry out it, uh, uh, to measure it uh, um, accurate at the offline because a recommendation system interacts with the users online, and you cannot uh, you cannot estimate the users decisions offline. Offline, so uh, we proposed uh, like a proxy metrics that uh, that uh, correlates a lot with the online business metrics, and we measured the metrics of the models offline mm -hmm. uh, using th this proxy. And how you like how this process was calculated? Was it just like a formula or like another machine learning model? Uh, it was a, it, it was a simple classification metrics. It was a recall, so we just me measured. Uh, how full how full there was the pool of candidates uh, that will be potentially interested uh, for user. And what do you optimize at the end? Like probability that user will order? Yes, like probability. That? Yes, you can reformulate uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the possible ways to train the ranking algorithm is you, you can train a classification uh, algorithm, for example. Yes, mm -hmm. because you you have uh, a, a problem that. Uh, uh, that meets all the fun companies. For example, you, you have or orders, you have small number of orders, and you, uh, and vice versa. You have clicks. You have uh, much more clicks than orders, but clicks are more. They have bigger uh, variation, so it's like it, it's much more noisy, and you sh and you should uh, choose appropriate uh, like combination of these two targets. For example. Okay. And uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the team? What uh, was the team you said that was like three, five persons? What was your role in the team? We had a product owner, we had an analyst, and uh, I was uh, a, a machine learning engineer. The product owner, owner just managed uh, our planning and time. The analyst got an insights uh, on the current quality of product, like what are the current metrics, uh, uh, how can we gain more, uh, what features uh, will help us, and I implemented uh, the mm, the major part of, of the mm, of the decision of, of the of the pipeline, like data collecting, data preparation, um, model training, uh, choosing the model uh, w which you want uh, to use, then uh, carrying out the AB test, and then de deploying the model uh, in the production and re regular uh, refresh. Like oh. retraining of the model. Yeah, retraining on the on the um, on the fresh data because the user uh, preference uh, ch changes uh, mm -hmm. in time. So yeah. you should. Uh, and uh, what uh, mechanism do you use to check that the model still behave uh, as expected? Like that uh, the behavior have not changed so much that the model is not working. Usually, you have a dashboard with an offline and online metrics. You can have an, a dashboard uh, with the health. Of the model, where you can see the key metrics of the of the model, uh, key proxy metrics, the revenue. For example, if you uh, wake up in the morning, open the dashboard, and and, and you see that the uh, number of orders or conversion rate uh, decreased, so it's uh, it's like bad ring that something went wrong, and please check your uh, pipeline. Maybe maybe the, uh, the model is old. Maybe there are some. Uh, Problems in, in the data set. But this ring that will mean that like anything uh, with the whole application may be wrong, not only with the model. Or there is like a specific dashboard for this model? Usually, uh, uh, analysts build speci specific uh, dashboards for uh, for each part of, of the product. So okay. you, you have a complex, uh, no, you have quite complex model, so you just build a dashboard here. Okay, and which tools have you used for like data preparation, model training, deployment? Is it like some common use like Spark or it is uh, something built in house? We used in house uh, instruments by uh, but they quite very similar to common 
uh, industry uh, tools like MapReduce uh, frameworks and uh, for example, we used Python, we used uh, analogs of uh, uh, of common tools, and uh, and what was uh, like the data volume you worked with, like approximate? I think it may be NDA, but approximately thousand of uh, gigabytes, maybe petabytes. And gigabytes of terabytes? Oh, a terabytes, a terabytes. Okay, yeah, a terabytes. Because a thousand of gigabytes doesn't sound. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true, it's true. It depends on the time period. Uh, on which you want to train, for example, a month or a week or a whole year, so it can uh, uh, increase to up to ten times. Yeah. Yeah. Could you elaborate a little bit more on like uh, what features you generate or like? Uh, I think it's uh, NDA in all uh, marketplaces. Or like maybe what was your strat strategy to generate a good feature? Not a particular feature, but like how you tackle this problem. The features that uh, that estimate the interactions of users and restaurants. For example, uh, how do you decide how uh, uh, it is a, a good restaurant or bad restaurant? For example, you can uh, look at the uh, rating, user rating of the uh, restaurant. For example, you can use the conversion rate from search to order, and it's like quite common. Uh, quite common uh, features for all uh, marketplaces. And we try to uh, measure, mother, measure the interactions and... Yeah, cool, very nice case. Now let's probably move to, to, the, to the business case. Yeah, sure. Case. So the situation is that uh, European airline came to us and said that they uh, see over like a couple last years that uh, the non-performance cost has increased and non-performance cost for airline is uh, if you simplify of course uh, mm -hmm. all what is not concerned with uh, piloting or uh, is flying because the main cost uh, for any airline is fuel uh, mm -hmm. and they think and they look like in the data that probably the main reason for that is uh, <coughs> is the increase uh, in uh, average delay, like decrease in their on-time performance. Uh, first uh, on the case, like uh, a comment of a general consultant landed and they see that like it will be good to be able to predict these delays. Mm -hmm. So how, and then they uh, came to Gamma and say, and say like, okay, here is like, we have this case. Could you please uh, make a model for us so that we will be able to, to forecast these uh, delays? How you are going to tackle like this problem? From what you are going to start? If like a couple classic consultants will came to you with this with this question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me think uh, for ten seconds. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. We should look uh, at the delays. Uh, it's a key object of our uh, research, and we should investigate uh, what are the uh, components of, of, of the delays. For example, mm, I want to decompose the delays into a smaller... Uh, okay, what, what happened? Uh, what caused delays? Which uh, maybe yeah. some... Which part of the chain uh, after landing of the airplane and before the lift up uh, can cause delays? So let me decompose the whole process. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of Let's the think about like what uh, can cause the delay. Yeah. So, I will use uh, this part of the yeah. table. Mm, okay, uh, delays. Let me think uh, which part of uh, de delays consists of. Okay, the first thing is uh, the airplane goes down. Yep. And so it, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's ready to take the passengers off. Yep. Uh, the the second, second thing. Uh, okay, what uh, what should we do? Mm, we should uh, un unload baggage. Yeah, unload baggage. Uh, of course. Like then we should uh, unload passengers. Unload passengers. Yeah, that's usually done in parallel. But yes, yes. It too, we can say that it's two different steps. Passengers. Uh, 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 okay, let me do it in this way. Yep. 
So then we should, uh, for example, uh, uh, clean up the airplane yep. after passengers. Then we should uh, shoot fourth. And uh, we should uh, usually catering and fuel. Yeah, catering fuel. Okay. Uh, catering fuel. Then uh, we should uh, check the engines of the airplane okay. airplane check yep. uh, technical check technical check so and uh, after that we're ready to I think that we're ah, maybe maybe some uh, the crew change maybe maybe yeah sometimes crew change change and after that we're ready for the new uh, passengers and yeah. baggage yes mm -hmm. upload mm. upload baggage and passengers yep. so and we can and we should investigate all the all the steps is it uh, all uh, maybe not uh, maybe I have maybe you have missed like the last one, or like take off. Yeah, it's take off. Take off. Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe yeah. It's like the main one. Let's mm -hmm. let's think like what we are going to do with it. And uh, I want to investigate each step. Yeah. And uh, and uh, look at them. Uh, what's their uh, time? What's their average time? And uh, let me let me um, let me see some um, optimization ways for optimization. Uh, uh, Do you need optimization here? I mean, uh, uh, s some some steps uh, we can do in, in parallel. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, the first ways how to how we can optimize process, and uh, sometimes uh, uh, several steps can take. Uh, uh, Longer, for example, uh, airplane check or uh, crew change, and uh, mm, for example, why delay happens? Uh, because the time for all these operations takes longer than the uh, time between the uh, uh, than expected fl example. flight arrive and the next uh, yeah. uh, flight is takes off. Mm, yes. Uh, let's focus, for example, on the first step. Can it be a delay here? Uh, yes, because, for example, uh, if you look at some low-cost com companies, they per uh, the single plane perform mm, two, three, or maybe four, uh, uh, four flights at, uh, at the day, and they are... Um, Not even 12. Yeah, maybe 12, and, and, they, and they like, uh, and they go one after each other, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, if the day starts wrong, if something was wrong with the first, uh, uh, like on flight, it uh, it would affect all the all the other. Yeah, the delay will be propagated. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, and that, that, that will affect all the all the mm, next flights. So, I think that uh, should we have some like uh, windows, uh, maybe not between all the flights. Uh, but okay, uh, let's fo focus on the first problem, like just uh, delay for casting without optimization yet. Okay, and uh, let's also assume that like all these steps, like mm -hmm. most of them, are airlines like are working for years and they optimize as uh, much as they can mm -hmm. all this process, like taking in parallel mm -hmm. what can be done in parallel. Okay, say so you have like a data of uh, airline schedules of like actually all airlines. Mm -hmm. You had like an API, you can request it. Mm -hmm. uh, for last, I don't know, like three years in Europe, uh, where your client operates. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you going to do? I want to collect the data and uh, and uh, look at the data. I want to estimate uh, some uh, statistics. Uh, for example, mm, how are you going to uh, calculate the delay of particular flight? Like uh, first of all, okay. Uh, I can formulate this problem as a machine learning problem. Like I, I have uh, some features, uh, uh, for example, about the uh, airplane, about the 
uh, number of passengers, about the time, about the geography of the flight, uh, and they can affect. Uh, oh, I, I I want to collect all the features yeah, th correct. Th that uh, mm, that could uh, help me to understand why how, why uh, the length of delay. Yep. So and I also want to uh, look at the uh, distribution of distribution of the delays. For example, when I uh, when I uh, collect all the delays, for example, I have uh, x1, uh, xn. Okay, uh, uh, let it be t, t1, tn. It's the length, uh, length. Mm, small question: How are you going to calculate the length of delay? Like you have like a particular schedule for a particular yeah. flight. How are you going to determine the delay? Yeah, I I, I will calculate it using uh, logs of the air company. Uh, is this uh, if you have logs of all this uh, uh, of this process? Yeah, for example. For example, yes, I can just uh, subtract uh, the uh, for example the delay time t uh, is the actual time of uh, of lift off. Uh, Actual uh, lift off time uh, minus expected. expected, and expected is what this was in on schedule. Yes, it, it's what it what yes what was on, on schedule, and actual is the actual time that we have uh, uh, in our logs, and that you you are going to forecast like later. Yes, uh, for example, we can do it uh, end to end. Like we can uh, just aggr uh, aggregate all the stages into one uh, target uh, variable and uh, and look and and, and try and, uh, to predict it uh, uh, using uh, using some uh, features about the flight. Yeah. And, and what one small question? Yeah. And what about the situation you mentioned before with a, like a low coaster when one airplane make like I don't know, like ten flights in a day and if they start wrong then uh, you're going to propagate uh, the delay. How are you go going to tackle these situations here? Yeah, uh, I understand your question because if we have a, a problem in, uh, in in the first flight in, in one of the previous flights, it will affect all the all the next uh, flights and even Okay, uh, I think that, that we should uh, treat our data. Uh, I mean that if we had this uh, shadow, and in, if the first flight was uh, wrong, but the other uh, fly, but the other, mm, but but the length of other uh, segments segments uh, stay the stay the same. It means that uh, all the next flights uh, were done on. Uh, in the right way, yeah. uh, there were no delays, and uh, we should uh, uh, we should mark them um, as an, okay. We shouldn't uh, uh, treat them like an like delays. We should uh, for th for these chain flights. Uh, we should uh, yeah. The delay uh, will be only on the first. Flight. Yes, on, only on the first. It's like only one negative example here, and the others uh, are, are correct. Yeah, and how then we can correct your formula to calculate uh, like. The, the delay you discussed, described. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let me think. Okay, I think that we also should subtract here the uh, the delay time of the f of the mm, previous uh, of the previous time I if this fly is changed with uh, no, other like of the previous flight. I I mean. Uh, it's, it's it's it should be some of the old delays of the previous flights. Why do you need all of them, of all previous flights? Because uh, the delay uh, can uh, uh, may accumulate on each step. For example, for example. Yeah, yeah like you, you may accumulate the delays, but can you compute it only knowing like the times of one previous flight? No, we, we should know uh, the times of flights of all previous. But we have this data in production. Yeah, yeah, we have it. Uh, it will be the sum of the delays uh, of the delays of previous flights. Yeah, like just to correct the delay of your flight uh, to the previous delays to to uh, to get like exact the particular minutes or like I don't know, hours which is delay associated with this particular flight. Yeah. Otherwise, we are going to forecast like something very noisy. It's true, and moreover, we should calculate uh, this thing d dynamically. 
uh, I mean that we should it calculate uh, for the first flight and it, then for a second flight, uh, so like mm -hmm. iteratively. Yeah, yeah, correct. I think this one we can a little bit simplify it. Just mm -hmm. take the uh, like the difference uh, of uh, last f uh, previous flight arrival and his schedule arrival because only this time I'm going yeah, to affect. Yeah, it's this true. Particular. If but you that should be equal. Yeah. Yeah, it should be. You can uh, uh, transform it. Yeah, to uh, uh, to things uh, to things that you mentioned. Yep. Sorry. Let's continue to this graph. What yeah. Uh, sure. The first thing that scientists should do with data is to look at the data. And uh, I, I um, first uh, after the collection uh, after the uh, collection of logs and calculation of delay time, I want to build the distribution of the data. Uh, I have like an, uh, this this will be a delay time. It will be the density prob probability of the delays. And I want to look at the distribution. For example, if we uh, 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 on, on like what. Uh, what dimensions of distribution you're going to take? I mean, uh, if will it be distributed for a particular flight, airport, or uh, okay, uh, type of aircrafts, maybe? It depends on the granularity of the level that we uh, th that we look at. For example, uh, we, we can build it on several on several um, levels. We can estimate our overall or all our flights and estimate the uh, like uh, statistics, like. Uh, Expectation and the uh, and the mm, expectation and uh, variance. Yes, yes, and, and variance sigma. Yeah, and and we, we can uh, and for example, for each uh, airport or, or for each uh, flight, for each uh, like uh, uh, type of aircraft. Yes, type of aircraft. Uh, we we can have, uh, for example, these two statistics. Mu and sigma, and look at them. And for example, if uh, and we can, for example, sort our air airport uh, our air our airports uh, by the uh, variance and see uh, which airport uh, mm, have uh, has uh, the most uh, unpredictable uh, delay, uh, and uh, and this will be a signal for us. Maybe something wrong. On that airport, maybe we can investigate it more precisely. Uh, all the steps at the airport. Yeah. For example, we looked on particular airport, like one of the previous years. It was, for example, like Charles de Gaulle, because mm -hmm. uh, there was like a lot of strikes when mm -hmm. the French decided not to work. And uh, yeah, see that like it is a big sigma in, the, in this airport. Yeah, it will be. It, it will be like a big signal because, okay, uh, uh, one airport. Uh, has a small mu, the other is a big one, but we can just uh, use it like a uh, like a, mm, to to sh to schedule our flights. It, it it will be like a like a distance uh, between them, and we can. Uh, but uh, when the variation is big, it uh, this component sh sh should affect us more. Okay, so you mean that like for forecasting the future flights delays, we can use uh, just like averages. It will. It will be. Model. Yeah, it will be like a baseline, it, uh, because it's very fast. It's very straightforward to calculate, and it will uh, give give us to the first uh, the first insights. And on in which level do you propose to use uh, like this average to forecast for a particular flight? Like is it like air uh, on the, uh, level of uh, aircraft, particular aircraft, or like aircraft type, or airport or flight? Mm -hmm. Which level do you think will be enough? Okay, good question. Let me think a little bit. Mm. I think I will use the object of a, a pair of airports. So, like the direction of flight. Yeah, the direction from, say, of Amsterdam flight. Amsterdam to Paris. Yeah, because. Uh, uh, in in this process, uh, we have to. It will it, it will show us the uh, distance of flight, the length of flight, uh, because what here in these steps, uh, because the the delay may be affected by the previous uh, airport because it, it can 
delay there because of these problems. And uh, and after the uh, after the uh, first step, the, the second airport also can affect the, the delay of the future. So you mean the future like to for, uh, forecast the delay of I don't know, like flight uh, from Amsterdam to Paris? We are going to compute these averages on uh, like for all pre uh, like history flights uh, which made uh, were made from Amsterdam to Paris. Yeah, it's one of the possible ways. For example, we can make a, sim a, sim yeah, yeah, a, yeah, a, a simpler model. For example, we can uh, do it at the level of aircrafts. Single aircraft, we can uh, assume that uh, uh, that mm, uh, the major part of the, this variation uh, in the in the in the point five. Yeah, maybe it came from aircraft. But uh, uh, how? How you will explain that the direction of a flight, in this example, like uh, from uh, Amsterdam Paris, mm -hmm. how this direction, like Paris, affect the delay of uh, like possible, uh, like how the uh, the destination, like Amsterdam, affects the delay? Because the steps two uh, and four depends on the and five depends on the service level at the destination airport. So it's, uh, and what about the uh, outbound airport? On which, what is the depends on it? Because uh, to, to go out from, uh, from the airport, you should uh, perform all the steps uh, again. Uh, okay, not all, but uh, catering fuel and uh, upload baggage and upload passengers. And these steps uh, could be slow, for example, on the airport of uh, of, of taking off of the, of the first airport. Uh, what else do you think we need to consider, like uh, in this model, like even in a simpler model? What is like very important for aircraft and uh, airline companies, a part of uh, airports? Uh, uh, weather, weather yes. of course, uh, and uh, for example, uh, at winter, it uh, could be, uh, for example, uh, heavy snow, thunderstorm. Uh, the the uh, ice maybe uh, on on the road and it should affect all the uh, all the air aircrafts in this airport. Yeah. For example, in Saint Peter in all for, uh, in all north airports like Saint Petersburg, Moscow, and Oslo. Oslo, yes, Oslo. Uh, wh weather conditions. We should and uh, uh, say we decided that yes, we need to optimize somehow the schedule, and to do it, we need to forecast uh, the expected delays uh, for say like from one day in the future to three days, like or four, four days, like mm -hmm. three days in advance for starting from tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, which model, which features you are going to use? Okay, uh, and yeah, yeah, let's assume that we know the weather forecast for three four days. Okay, uh, here we go to the uh, topic of the. Uh, Model cho uh, of choosing the model and cho choosing the target. So the target is like a real number, and for this type of uh, target, uh, we usually use a regression model. So uh, and we and we also uh, can use uh, different models, uh, and it depends on the complex uh, on the how accurate uh, uh, do we want these uh, predictions. The predictions should be and how interpretable the predictions should be. For example, we can use uh, two models of regression. Uh, as, uh, f uh, the first one is it will be like linear regression, linear reg regression, and the second one will be like uh, gradient boosting decision trees. Yeah, and maybe one more random forest, which is uh, also a tree-based algorithm. So, for example, uh, and at this step, uh, we should go and ask our client, uh, uh, do we want uh, the delays uh, to be more more uh, accurate? And in this case, we, we should use... Uh, yeah, let's uh, choose like more accurate. It's okay. It will be black box. Yeah. And, but, uh, yeah. and uh, linear model will be more interpretable. Yeah. But uh, we can use the last achievements in the science and uh, the last achievements uh, can I interpret even a gradient boosting, uh, very, uh, I mean, all tree based models, for example, shaft values. Uh, so it, uh, it's implemented in the all frameworks, all on the all pop all popular frameworks like CutBoost, XGBoost, and we can, uh, uh, and we can. Mm. Yeah, we can probably retrieve the 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, Re retrieving the feature importance and uh, uh, making it, it's it, it's not a black box anymore. Yeah, yeah that sometimes it's very important to do. <laughs> yeah, because for business you should we should sometimes explain uh, why do we uh, think why our, why our algorithm uh, predicts such big delay, which features uh, affect the, the prediction more, and so we yeah. can use sharp values for. Yeah, but uh, here say that uh, gradient boosting is uh, good enough. Mm -hmm. So, so which features you're going to use? Like just a couple of them. Yeah, let me. Uh, feature engineering is a really important step. Uh, it's one of the most important steps. So uh, uh, let me let me uh, write it. So we have uh, which objects. Which objects do we have? We have an uh, airplane, no, aircraft. Yeah, aircraft. Uh, second, it's an uh, airport. Airport, and the third one is a context. Yeah, context. I mean, it will be. Uh, the it's about time of year, for example. Uh, it's about weather, for example. Uh, so. Uh, and uh, maybe also time of, of a day. Yeah, time of a day. It's uh, it's uh, okay. Uh, let me uh, uh, time of year day. Uh, okay. Um, what else? Weather. Uh, calendar features also like yeah weekends, vacations, whatever, yeah. holidays. Uh, day of. Uh, day of week so uh, what else uh, aircraft airport yeah, probably that can be enough yeah uh, what about aircraft uh, it should be the uh, let's here assume that we are using only one type of aircraft more or less okay just for simplicity okay okay uh, uh, what else yeah. okay uh, but we can use one type, but we can have a uh, different uh, mm, feel of, of the aircraft. For example, it, uh, uh, we have an uh, Airbus. It has a capacity of 200 uh, passengers, but on this flight there are only 50 passengers. Mm -hmm. So the uh, uh, upload baggage and the upload of, of, the passenger, of, of the passengers will be faster. So it's, it's like it will be... Mm. But will it be in context or in aircraft? Good question. Mm, I'd, I think it will be in context. Yeah. And what, like, what uh, I don't know, interesting about this feature, a part of a uh, day of uh, a week, a year, what, why it is different a little bit? Uh, we can know it only it really de uh, hey, we cannot uh, know this feature in advance. I mean, yeah, not, not very precise. Yes, it, it's not very precise. We know it maybe 40 minutes before there. Uh, yeah, the last, of course, will can be updated. Yeah, if we are going to forecast for four days, uh, yeah, sometimes we can assume that we approximately know. Yeah, we can estimate it historically, but yes, we okay. cannot. Yeah, uh, let's let's use it. Okay, and like number of passengers. A num uh, number of passengers. Yes, of passengers and the share. Share uh, with respect to the full uh, capacity. Yeah. Share of passengers. So, for example, uh, also context. The aircraft uh, could also carry out more passengers, but for example, like uh, some lo logistics company. Uh, yeah, here's uh, like boxes. passenger airlines. They have, of course, also cargo division, but here, say, let's yeah. assume that only passengers. But okay. that's a good point that also can be some cargo, special cargos. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, the, the others? Uh, that's enough. enough? Well, okay. Like, say, how you're going to apply a model, like what, what you're going to, on which numbers you're going to look after you apply the model. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the important thing here that we should uh, train and apply the model in the exact same uh, on the exact on the exact same uh, types of features. The all, all the conditions should be should be the same. We should uh, 
uh, not look at the future and uh, and we should also okay uh, uh, these tasks uh, this task is at, uh, uh, it depends on the time so uh, we should also look at the right across relation at the time because it's yeah. not simple uh, to not to look at the future uh, yeah so uh, let's move to the software engineering part or, or let's for example like how you're going to like we said that like, we are going to use the uh, number of passengers and share of, uh, of like, how full is the aircraft. Yes. Uh, and we are going to use uh, like three based model, like gradient boosting mm -hmm. trees. Uh, do, like what you are going to do with this feature? Are you going like to put it like just as a number or what can we do here? How, like what can be problems with this feature? Also take into account that it is integer and we can't know it for sure. Okay. Uh, we cannot we cannot uh, know it for sure, but we can, for example, uh, estimate this feature using, uh, for example, uh, last week or last month. Yeah, for example, we estimated. We estimated like mm -hmm. around uh, 150. I don't know mm -hmm. what. We can treat it as a float, for example, but the but we know that it's noisy. And we can, for example, uh, transform it into a categorical feature. For example, we can uh, divide. Mm, it may be uh, not important for us how much precise 68 percent or 69 or 67 percent of the of the aircraft is full. We can, for example, divide it into, for example, four uh, four types, uh, four uh, four intervals: uh, zero to 25. Uh, 25 to 50 percent and uh, 50 60 or 50 75 and 75 and 100 yeah it, it, it will be like an indicator and it will be more mm, precise uh, it, it will be less noisy in time be yeah. because we, uh, when we aggregate uh, statistics in time we uh, we get less uh, noise so we can also I think it will allow us like less overfit because since yeah. it has like I don't know like 200 different values like yeah. say our aircraft capacity is like 180 190 based on modification mm -hmm. but yeah if you're going to have a particular number of passengers it can just overfit yeah it's true it's true it's it's, it's kind of regulariza regularization yes w when you have uh, rare uh, features or sparse features you can aggregate them and get yeah. more uh, stable features cool okay uh, on lo what uh, quality metrics are you going to look in this model? Okay, uh, for example, I can use uh, there are two uh, general metrics in the regression. Uh, for example, it's MSE and it's uh, MAE. MSE uh, it, it's a mean squared error, MAE a mean absolute error, and they have different uh, statistics. Uh, uh, features uh, because for example if we want uh, to optimize the MSA with a constant uh, the optimal constant will be the mathematical expectation and uh, if we want to optimize the uh, mean absolute error it will be the median it will be the median of the of the of, of the target for example so uh, the uh, also median is more suitable for noisy data because it's less affected by the outliers. So if uh, when we looked uh, at the uh, prob probability density uh, on the histogram of, for example, delays, we can look, uh, we, we can uh, we can conclude are there any outliers? How do we want to deal with them? So uh, we can use uh, both both the, this both this uh, target, oh, target. both these oh, losses, losses. Yeah. Okay. And uh, how are we going to measure like the quality of the model? Compare the loss, yeah, or how? I I think that we can. You, it MSA and MAE is might might should be both and loss and the metrics in the regression tasks. Uh, in classification is different, but in the uh, in the mm, regression we can use uh, them directly mm. uh, or we can uh, particularly uh, particularly uh, measure the quality of the model by looking 
uh, at the uh, variation of the um, of the um, of the prediction. If it will be too noisy, it it might not be very uh, good for business for us. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Uh, so you mean like that maybe uh, we are over predicting, for example, delay not much but consistently. Well, what do you mean by very noisy? It depends of how we treat the uh, error. For example, uh, if, if you look at the MSE, uh, when the, uh, we treat the error uh, quadratically. Yeah. So if we want to avoid the really big uh, delays, uh, we should use MSE. And if we want to treat all, uh, all the delays linearly, uh, we can use M uh, Maya. It depends on the business requirements of the yeah, customer. Yeah, like what is for us or is worse. And what do you think for airline? What is worse for airline? Like a linear delay, or like waiting the delay is linear or, or quadratically? Uh, if I will be the uh, air company, I will treat it uh, quadratically because uh, I, uh, the a quadratical loss uh, will more mm, uh, help us to save the, the passengers' time. I uh, I want to save passengers' time, so I don't I don't wanna uh, to stay them at the airport or stay uh, at the whatever. Yeah, what, the what, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, for example, say like we created this model, but uh, it looks like that in the future we are going to we will need not only just like one number of forecast, but we will need uh, like. Uh, a distribution, like to forecast the de probability distribution of uh, delay of particular flight. Mm -hmm. What can you do here? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me think. Say so, yeah, that like we want to optimize, like on generate several scenarios, so check like how our future stay, uh, schedule will behave on these scenarios. And to generate the scenarios of delays, we will need like some, some probability distributions. Okay, we can reformulate our loss. For example, we can measure the loss uh, using the distrib distributions. Uh, there are some quite complex model losses like kullback labeler divergence, but it's too complex. Uh, let's not uh, I, uh, use it. Mm, let me again think. <laughs> Distribution. Mm. Can you please again? Uh, Formulate the. Uh, yeah, say we decided that uh, to, like, to estimate like how good our modified schedule is. Mm -hmm. We'll going. We are going to use Monte Carlo simulation. Mm -hmm. For to use Monte Carlo simulation, we need to generate like a lot of scenarios yes. of possible delays, yes. and then like uh, check the KPIs on uh, mm -hmm. all these scenarios. Uh -huh. And uh, okay, yeah. okay, thank you. I think that we can uh, uh, use uh, the same model, but with uh, different features. For example, we can uh, variate uh, the, for example, context features. Uh, we can uh, we can use multiple. Uh, we can infer the model several times. For example, with different uh, uh, with different uh, value of feature of how it's full, what's the weather. For example, if we variate, uh, okay, it's also will be for example. Uh, Categorical, we can uh, put into the model different uh, types of uh, of weather, and if the forecast is quite has small uh, variation, so the the weather uh, it's not very important, and at this uh, airport uh, for this yeah, aircraft. Good, good. So in this case, we are going to like to generate a lot of predictions and have some distribution. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, makes sense. Makes uh, sense. Variating these uh, inputs. Cool, and uh, yeah. Uh, we generated, say, like some probability distribution or particular forecast for like one day from from tomorrow to three days in the future. Mm -hmm. This is because airline usually assigns a particular aircraft to flights say, one day in advance. Mm -hmm. So they have like their schedule maybe like one year, or half a year in advance, but the particular aircraft uh, is assigned like one day in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, so how how do you think like uh, can can you improve the assignment of aircrafts to the particular flights using these your like expected delays which you have forecasted? I I, uh, I think that we can uh, do that. For example, uh, the simplest heuristics 
if we made our predictions and we and the model say, says that we have a uh, delay is bigger than uh, than usual for example if we have a distribution and uh, we look that we see that uh, the pre prediction is here so uh, we should uh, try to compensate the delay for example uh, we can uh, use the aircraft which is already for example checked already uh, uh, filled and catered uh, and uh, this this will be uh, like maybe more expensive, but that uh, how can you do it? Like you're going, you only construct the schedule like one day or not the schedule, some aircrafts one day in advance. You probably don't not mm, are not going to know like which aircraft will be fueled, checked, or like is it okay. aircraft going to wait the whole day? Okay, it's true. For example, we can uh, look uh, what's. We can look at the feature of of aircrafts. Maybe uh, some aircrafts are faster in the in the service than than the others aircraft. Maybe we have maybe we have, uh, okay. Uh, the simplest model we have two uh, aircrafts, yep. yeah, uh, and uh, the first one is new. It it was built on uh, 2021. It's really fresh and okay. 2020 and the uh, second one is a little bit older it was built on 2015 yep. so of course the airplane check will be faster for the new model because it requires less uh, engine check uh, or all the system or the okay. airplane system yep. check and so on it, it, it will be faster than uh, the second airplane so we can uh, we can assign the newer fly newer aircrafts to the uh, directions that we predicted as uh, to have a big delay, trying to compensate the delay. Yeah, okay, cool. And uh, if we assume that like all airplanes are exactly the same, you can only like, you only have fl uh, a particular flight uh, mm -hmm. like from Amsterdam to, uh, to Paris, from Amsterdam to London, from London to Amsterdam, etc. Is there any like a clever way you can use your forecast to assign these particular flights to aircrafts? Like construct this, what the airline call like a fleet line. Say we have mm -hmm. uh, like the first flight uh, like from destination A to destination B, uh, then uh, from uh, destination B to destination C, and uh, you have this flight from B to D, mm -hmm. and uh, say uh, you know, like from, uh, from here, uh, from uh, like C to B, it's B. Mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. say. Uh, and you expect that like this flight will have like quite a significant delay, like mm -hmm. this like delay distribution you have forecasted, and that's and you know that uh, the minimum the uh, the minimum the ground time the minimum ground time like to serve to perform all mm -hmm. these operations is like about like this, you know. So it is uh, less than uh, the time you're going to have with your forecasted delay. How you can optimize this uh, the, like the assignment of flights? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can. Uh, okay, the first thing think we, we uh, could do is um, make the margin bigger. For example, to mm, you can't change the schedule, unfortunately. Okay, I because can. like you communicate the schedule like half a year in advance for passengers mm -hmm. for planning for their flights. Uh, maybe we can rearrange the aircraft. Maybe it if uh, the. The second plane arrived earlier, and we have a prediction that uh, on the first, on the first, uh, first air aircraft will have a big delay. So we can assign the second aircraft, for example, to uh, this uh, direction, and to this will allow us to use the bigger margin uh, from here to make all the personal steps inside the first yeah, aircraft exactly. here. So for, you for can example. do like a clever 
flight assignments, clever construct fleet lines to have like some buffer before yeah. between uh, after the air the flight, which most likely are going to delay. Yeah, and the size of buffer uh, it, it will treat the density. Of, it will uh, uh, depends on the on the density of flights and the uh, our buffer capacities that we want to um, make for us. Yeah, probably. The, uh, cool. Mm -hmm. the last question. Uh, yeah. Like doing all these operations, we are optimized like to trying to reduce these non-performance costs. Yeah. And saying like you have like two situations, uh, say like this flight actually starts here exactly at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you decide uh, how to do like to, uh, to assign this flight here or like this fleet line mm -hmm. or this fleet line, as you say. Mm -hmm. Actually, you are, you're making this, the decision like which flights are going, most likely going to be delayed, this mm -hmm. one or this one. How you will make the decision? Like which flight to delay? Okay, I should delay it one of them, and which fly I uh, choose. Most to delay. likely, yeah. You you're checking like uh, which foot field line you're going to have, like this one mm -hmm. or this one, and you know that this flight most likely going to delay. Mm -hmm. So one of these flights, you need to decide uh, okay. which of them you you want to risk. Yeah, I want to look at the future flights in each of this chain. For example, if it it, it will be last, uh, okay. If it, if it will be the, la the last flight, I will uh, affect only one uh, flight, so I will choose the, this one. But uh, if uh, if it's a really uh, long chain, if you have one after another, and this delay will affect all the other flights, so I definitely will choose this one. So the mm. the first proxy will be the number of uh, number of affected delays in this chain, okay. for example. And why air play? Uh, air oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Airline losing money when they delay a flight <coughs> because they uh, should pay to the uh, the insurance to the passengers uh, like of, uh, for a delay they uh, they should compensate uh, th their time so they overpay maybe for uh, for staying at the airport they uh, had less utilization uh, for example if uh, we w if we plan to perform 10 flights at the day and uh, and the first one and the second one uh, they b both had a big delay we uh, maybe we can carry out only nine uh, flights at the day and the last one will be not be performed it, it will be also big costs for compensations for passengers and a big um, reputation uh, loss and so, uh, it's very important in our in uh, modern world. Yeah, indeed. Cool. That's it. Do uh -huh. you have okay. any questions? It's your time to ask them. Uh, yeah. Uh, please let me describe the proportion of uh, the distribution time for all of these uh, parts in your cases. For example, uh, how long uh, do you stay uh, on, on the client side for, uh, for example, trying to Mm, prepare features, how long does it take you to uh, fit the model, is it easy to deploy uh, your solution at the side of your of your clients, of your, of your customers? So ah, yeah, very, very interesting question. Of course, it uh, was like a little bit different before COVID and after the COVID, mm -hmm. because now we, it's like quite hard to stay with client, but we are still doing it sometimes when it is really ne needed for, for the case success. Uh, I think uh, about like one sprint, maybe one sp one from one to sprint, uh, we are working on the developing some uh, forecaster if you need it, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, we, of course, we work with the clients to, uh, to decide like which features are important. Uh, also, we are doing like different uh, data requests, trying to uh, decide like how can we access the data, how should we work on the client infrastructure or we get the data to our cloud infrastructure and work on it, like what will be faster, what will be the most efficient, mm -hmm. because like time is the most important here. Yeah. Uh, so, and after we have some like forecaster, usually like the first version is like created quite fast and mm -hmm. then we can uh, start working on some simple optimization models. If we, if we need it, of course, it will depends on cases. Some cases are you only use demand forecaster or like don't have any forecaster. After that, like we developed for a sprint about uh, some some simple optimization model. Of course, it does don't have all constraints. And in parallel, like uh, on another stream, the demand for a cost improves. Like that, like we iterate also with clients, check some on some historical data, trying to make maybe some A/B testing way it is mm -hmm. possible. Uh, 
And uh, after that, like uh, we try, the goal is to produce some like MVP or like some possible schedule or like optimized schedule or optimize, I don't know, like promo plan as fast as possible so that we can try to iterate this business mm -hmm. on the particular plan, not only like on Word saying that like we are going to make it better, but here is a schedule. We, we estimate that it should be better than your current schedule and the changes is there. What do you think? Like they mm -hmm. say, okay, yeah, this is not possible because mm -hmm. of what? Uh, okay, then we are going to impl implement this constraint in, uh, in the optimization model re-optimize and the next day or like maybe next week, depending on how big the change is, mm -hmm. we again, okay, here we fix it, what do you think? It's so yeah, like to have a yeah. faster uh, iterations. I understand. And uh, how do you support your models? I mean, you deployed it, the AB tests uh, goes okay, you, you've got an improvement. How do you support the solution? Uh, do you hire some team uh, on, on the side of client or how, yeah. how it's per yeah. uh, processed? It's uh, good. Like usually we deploy it at least. Of course, it depends on the cases, but yeah, of course, it's usually it's some kind of Docker containers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, usually also some kind of like a simple interface. It can we can use like a Tableau for interface if we want only to present the data. If there is no some interactions with users, then mm -hmm. it's probably like React OS, maybe Angular. Depends on like which capacities we have on a client or like on our side. Uh, when when we deployed it and tested it, maybe run some tests, uh, uh, the perfect case when we are able to uh, to hire for some data scientists or software engineers for client and build the internal team, not only to support the tool but also to evolve it. Uh -huh. Because uh, uh, usually, I mean, sometimes there is like not enough time to evolve it to like uh, to the perfect level, mm -hmm. like uh, to work on the stability or like all these tests, etc. And that's why it's very good when there is a team to not only to support, but also to evolve and to, to satisfy some requests from the business. Mm -hmm. When they change, for example, some of the business rules, they have to be updated and it is much easier if there is a team to support it. On in other cases, it's quite rare, but uh, there's like specific cases when like client should not see that specific some data, mm -hmm. which we receive, for example, I don't know, from their competitors or from other side. And then they, we can uh, give it the support to the clean room which is like a special company which are going to operate it and client mm -hmm. will, uh, will pay them some, some money for operating. Mm -hmm. We have also these capabilities inside Gamma, like mm -hmm. a special department who is uh, like supporting their ongoing uh, tools. Yeah, okay, sure. And sh uh, should you hire and train the in-house team after you deployed the solution? No, uh, actually before. Like before? usually like one month we you start working as like as fast to have some something like first results. And like after one month, the ideal solution when we get like first like one t team member from the client side, then in a month, uh, two of them. Like in the middle of the project, like half of our team should be from the client side. And at the end, we just hand over it. Mm -hmm. Because like not to have a rush, like saying we need to document all in uh, one week and uh, explain, uh, I don't know, like thousands of line of codes yeah. to, a person, to a poor person who have to maintain it. Okay, thank you. And I have the last question. What attract you more personally? Uh, uh, working on the data an analysis and consulting. Um, mm -hmm. As I said, I before BCG I worked in academia, like as a researcher, like mm -hmm. PhD student. And uh, the difference with consultants that you can I can apply uh, my knowledge, my experience in practice, and see the results in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Like the academia, you can develop a model for months, then present it on a conference. That is good. Uh, but it is always a challenge to find the correct data, mm -hmm. to be able to code it because you're on the, the only one. But on the project, you have all the resources of the company, mm -hmm. or you have like money, you have other people who you can ask to implement a part of it, and you can see the results, uh, I don't know, like in, uh, in the plane or in the stores in a couple months. Yeah, thank you very much for the interview. Uh, I like it. I think, uh, I mean, you showed like your technical expertise, also ability to decompose the problem and to find the correct like points where to apply your knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, like a couple of areas for development. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, in the fit part, it, you, uh, I think it was like a little bit vague in uh, ask, uh, like answering the question on what, how, how you imagine your work. Because mm -hmm. like it was, uh, uh, I feel like you don't know like for sure what we are doing. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, just like to study a couple of case examples, maybe YouTube videos, uh, because usually the consultant came like when they like not, not don't know the problem, but uh, n 
usually produce like the hypothesis particular and trying to solve it, not just like checking like how we can help. Mm -hmm. At least uh, in most cases, because like clients are not going to pay a lot of money and say, hey, help us somehow. At least like the, this comment was uh, a little bit uh, strange for me. Mm -hmm. uh, part of that, like on a technical part, I uh, think most like is good. Maybe a little bit stuck on, uh, on the delay formulation. Mm -hmm. was like it's okay like not all uh, not formulated uh, correct from the beginning uh, then uh, we we found like how it should be also like that you like decompose it uh, to these types can it may help like or like may improve if you decided like which type of this or like which step corresponds to which feature like say most of them will correspond to the airport feature mm -hmm. like i don't like catering etc is like mm -hmm. the, then okay, the contest yes and the first step exactly was uh, what determines like the initial delay, like the one which you corrected here. So mm -hmm. I was like expected that you will see it. Okay. Uh, yes. And uh, then like if you if you decompose and link them, then it's like very easy to understand why you're going to use this feature, mm -hmm. why it is important. Uh, also like a comment about uh, the like on which level you're going to do it, like flight direction or uh, like distinct uh, destin uh, sorry, not destination, but uh, origin and uh, arrival. Yeah, it was not like fully clear of me if we need, the, if we are going to, uh, is it like why it is so important where we are going to fly it, mm -hmm. if we are going to estimate this delay. Okay. Because it can be, yeah. it can be some logic if it is, for example, like uh, Schengen, non-Schengen zone, mm -hmm. then you have like a special customs, etc. But uh, yeah, it's uh, a little bit, not, not, not sure if it's so important, if there is uh, reasons for that. In terms of uh, modeling, uh, yeah, I like your idea about like just generating uh, generating a lot of different scenarios by tweaking a little bit the initial parameters. Uh, on practice, actually, we just use the historical one for mm -hmm. these estimations because, like, uh, just uh, for for Monte Carlo simulations, usually it is good enough just okay. to generate the historical. But your idea, I also like it. Uh, in terms and yeah, you get the the point that like we we can't change the time flight time or like arrival time uh, departure time, but we can tweak like how we construct this fleet line. Okay. So in general, it is quite positive. Mm -hmm. uh, the final decision we need to compare with other candidates. Okay, <laughs> thank you for uh, very much for the feedback. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's it. If you have any questions left. Please ask them in the comments down below. And if you want to become a participant of a future episode, just send your CV to YouTube at felicibilita.pro under the subject Will you hire me candidate? Thanks for watching and until next time. Cheers.